Welcome to our research seminar on City Digital Twin Flagship Project and uh, one of its uh, first use cases related uh, to urban planning hosted by Gate Institute. Uh, my name is uh, Desislava Petrova Antonova, project coordinator and the moderator on the seminar. The seminar will be in English uh, since we have uh, foreign participants. Uh, thank you for the participation of all researchers from Chalmers University and also University of Twente. Before to start, I would like to present briefly the flagship um, project. Our challenges and uh, the related uh, objectives are to produce uh, a high quality 3D city model of Sofia, starting from part of it by applying the concept of the digital twin to semantically enrich the model through sharing it with gate stakeholders as a digital market to exchange data, to further develop the model as a simulation, analytical and visualization tool by applying the basic criteria of the digital twin, design, test and build for it digitally, and finally to promote the exploitation of the digital twin in city processes and service production. Platform is the core of the digital twin. It enables municipalities, uh, industry partners, researchers, and uh, the general public uh, to use a true digital tool for planning, design, exploitation, experimentation, etc. In order to implement it, uh, we define three main uh, research areas data management and integration, analysis and simulation, and advanced uh, visualization. Our activities are motivated uh, by improving the health and well-being of citizens and uh, the circularity of, being of the buildings and infrastructure as a whole. District Wozenets uh, of Sofia is selected as a pilot area for development of uh, the digital twin where we are implementing uh, two uh, use cases. The first use case includes analysis and simulation of air quality, focusing on pollution dispersion, depending on the wind direction and velocity, as well as uh, the geometry and location of the buildings. In collaboration with the uh, Chalmers researchers, we are testing different uh, turbulence models and uh, computational results are compared uh, to experimental ones. Although it was and it's, um, is the greenest part of uh, Sofia, a lot of problems arise due to construction of new buildings, which uh, motivate us to implement a use case related uh, to urban planning. The use case uh, is a joint work with uh, Sofia Plan, uh, which is a municipal enterprise responsible for the spatial and strategic planning of uh, Sofia municipality. In our previous workshop in February, uh, we show how we collaborate with the uh, GATE uh, partner, Chalmers University. Now I'm happy to introduce uh, you our joint research with uh, one of GATE stakeholders, uh, Sofia Puan. Our goal is to create a strong uh, multidisciplinary team from both uh, institutions and together to work on ideas, elaboration and solutions implementation. And uh, this is a key factor for success uh, because, uh, you know, to cook a delicious cake, uh, you need old cream and better. And uh, I'd like uh, to thank each one of the joint team for being enthusiastic, patient and focusing on the goal that mattered the most. So, as uh, Cedric Price said, technology is uh, the answer, but what was the question? Now I'm going to give the floor to Darina Manova, who is an architect uh, in Sofia Plan. She graduated uh, from the Polytechnic University of Milan in preservation of built environment. She joined Sofia Plan last year working on parametric uh, planning as an alternative solution for a better urban planning. So Darina, tell us more about the question. Hello everybody. Hello, okay. Uh, I will share my screen with you. And tell me 
Can you see everything? Bringing it to the question, uh, as Desi said, uh, first of all, I would like to say a little bit more about uh, Sofia Plan. Sofia Plan, yes, it's the municipal enterprise uh, for the city of Sofia, but most importantly, it collects data uh, that goes into the analysis with uh, all the experts that we have from urban planning, transportation, all the branches are collected. Then we also involve stakeholders and we open a dialogue. The, the main goal is to have the dialogue. And nevertheless, after all, to make a plan and suggest strategies go to the municipal, to the municipality, but also uh, within the stakeholders area. One of the key projects, some of the key projects that we are working on and they're massive, uh, our division for Sofia, which is a very lengthy process till 2050, that in involves a lot of frameworks and strategies how to improve all types of uh, quality in within the city. And right now we are working on the program for Sofia, which is the investment plan, or how can we uh, propose integrate integrated solutions with the investment. And most of all, and here comes why the question, why the parametric planning is the plan of Sofia, which is the general plan for the city. And it's a master plan that will be set for the next 20 years. And uh, it, it's a lengthy process that examines the whole city with uh, all the indicators and parameters. And it, it sets uh, the priorities, where it should be built, how it should be built, what type of uh, limitations we have in the city. The key weaknesses that Sofia Plan noticed or examined as well, uh, working with all the data that is coming in and it's becoming gradually uh, a lot, is that the general plan as it is now, it is a very static picture of our city. And if we want to address uh, and be flexible with all the data that comes in, uh, including that data, it's a very hefty and long procedure to renew every time this big picture of how the city should evolve for the next 20 years. And nevertheless, uh, the parameters that we also use are sometimes variables that the general plan cannot include in itself on a very quick and short notice. This is the picture that you see of our general plan, which was designed in 2009. And we cover all the areas, everything's inside, every city has a master plan. Uh, me as an architect, I work with the master plans. But what is uh, the main goal right now is to view uh, the city as, an, as a life organism, but meaning also that we need to examine it in, uh, more details and what Sofia Plan is doing is uh, reviewing the city as a system of different units. Uh, each Lausanne is, is a area, a region, a neighborhood that had in, includes four or five right now uh, different units and the whole city is made out of 564 city units. Each of them are categorized with types that include different indicators that we are looking for and sometimes we include no, not only the urban planning parameters that we call objective, but also subjective ones, like what is, like for example, what is satisfaction of the people that live in the area and uh, how can we improve that? We try to involve the citizens in an open dialogue and for them to be able to witness and see how the city evolves. All those parameters are being um, selected and visualized in a, in a map with their passport. We can choose different units and we can read what the current condition and uh, health, if we want to call it, of the city unit is. Um, from them, from there, we can also perceive uh, what the differences between the all the units in the system are. But most of all, how do we give a nominator for what's in the best interest of the cities of the citizens? And this is the quality of life. What we seek is the quality of life, which at the end is a sum of a lot of indicators uh, 
very interconnected with each other. All the different spheres are uh, inter uh, in a dialogue well with themselves, and that and also that's why we call this a variable we, because we don't know how a life would be impacted for the long term. That's why we want to seek something that is more flexible than the general plan, which is now. We want to have a dynamic picture of of the city, even if you want to uh, recall. And we are all witnessing the difficulties uh, of and the changes that are coming out from the pandemic from last year, how the city should evolve within uh, all those possible impacts that we can witness also for the future. That's why we need to be very quick to, response, to respond to a change. And here comes the parametric planning. This is the question. <laughs> and the how, the possible solution of how we can address this big system of uh, difficulties, but also potentialities that we have in the city. We are seeking to combine the domain knowledge of SOFIA plan, the, um, the experts that are involved in, into the planning of the strategies, but we also want to optimize and automate the calculations needed in order to create a new general plan and also to be able to test the solutions that we give with our strategies. But at the end, it's also a tool that we want to create for an open and transparent dialogue between the stakeholders, which are from citizens to city planners, investors, builders. Uh, in that way, we can drive uh, towards a more sustainable development of the cities. And if needed, we can adjust also the strategies. The steps that we have analyzed uh, and written down as a first concept for the project are that we need to be able to automate the, the passport, the new indicators that are coming in. Uh, that we, that In that way, we can target also the deficits wherever we see that there is an area that needs our assistance or that the municipality should also address as a problematic and targeted area. We want to create priorities as well. We work with the three main pillars of the sustainable development, uh, which are based on people, nature and economy. We use the deficits as initial input parameters for the parametric planning, and we want to use also the available potential, potential land, not only work with the existing build, built environment, but also address what's for the future. But how do we give the solutions that are based on this input and the potential land for them to be able to compare and analyze the solutions? This is how we decided first to test with uh, already made softwares or also um, ready given tools. Uh, one of them is Delph. It's an American product, American uh, uh, business company that operates uh, with uh, 3D uh, parametric planning, and also a Bulgarian studio that works with uh, rhinoceros and grasshopper, given, giving them a set of indicators, the, those ones that we use as an initial starting point for the parametric planning. We gave also the potential areas and the target goals that we seek in order to improve that area with the deficits. As Desi mentioned, Los Angeles is our pilot area. We are also working on this one. Uh, everything from that pilot area has been collected and given as maps, as indicators, as data sets, and then connected into what uh, has been offered as a product. From there, we were able to not only refine requirements uh, and proof, test proof, uh, that it is possible to, to create the system of softwares and tools, but we also found exactly that we need to start something a little bit more different because uh, up till now, most of the tools are um, targeting very small areas. Instead, we want to use uh, mixed land use. We have potential area that is scattered throughout the city unit. And therefore, we started also to work with uh, with Gate uh, in order to first start from scratch by creating the algorithm and building the interconnections that are 
existing that exist between the indicators and what we are doing right now and Strian will present to where we reached and also how we are refining our requirements is um, that we are addressing also the social infrastructure and the environment as a new goal but we are uh, able we have been able also to witness that it is possible to do exactly what we want it will take a lot of time of course because it's a very complicated system but it has its potential and we are happy to be collaborating on this project together with Gate. And I'm leaving the floor to Stuyan now. Thank you. Thank you, Dari. Uh, I would like uh, to introduce you Stuyan Bukliski. Stuyan graduated uh, from the University of Liverpool. Uh, in 2017 and after two years in industry went back uh, to academia to pursue master degree in structural engineering uh, at Imperial College London. He joined our team in 2020 to focus on the application of artificial intelligence uh, to problems uh, in architecture, construction and planning. Yeah, tell us about our first results in parametric urban planning. Thanks, Desi. Um, yeah, sure. So essentially, um, Gary already gave the um, why and the what, um, and I will attempt to kind of show a little bit more about how, how we can do this, how we can create a product or a, or a, a, at least an algorithm that can um, that can satisfy what uh, the requirements of Sofia plan. Um, I, can you just tell me if you see my screen? Uh, yes, it's OK. OK, um, this is frozen on my side just. To, OK, cool. Um, so, so uh, Dari already said about um, how the problem looks from their point of view. And um, and we kind of when we um, enter the project, we kind of were given this uh, this list of um, this this view of the problem from a very urban point of view, so a very uh, planning centric, planning centric uh, architectural point of view. We were given rules, we were given indicators, we were given geometry, and the major kind, of, the major city systems that keep the the city going, the the, the infrastructure, the buildings. Um, we we were, however, given the information sort of like a list. And um, and there wasn't really that we were given geometry. We were given a list of, uh, of rules and indicators, uh, but but there wasn't really any mathematical model behind uh, behind it, uh, which was which was understandable. Uh, but I think that's that's Gates' role in this is to sort of set the set the mathematics of the problem, uh, set the systems. Uh, and uh, and basically this way you can solve the problem after that. So a big part of what we what we did so far was to was to create a, a, a mathematical model. Um, and as uh, essentially we created um, we broke down the problem into separate mathematical models that are interconnected with each other, but at the same time uh, can be. Uh, allow for modulation so we can we can take out some stuff out and uh, we can put some other stuff in depending on the indicators we want to satisfy so um after we after we did that we we, we were left with systems with several systems and we needed to and to specify what inputs what constraints and what functions uh we want to apply to each of them in order to because we didn't have this so this relationship, this clear relationship between geometry and outputs, in between geometry indicators. Um, so the first thing we wanted to do in order to create an optimizable problem was this. Um, also, from from the from the point of view of um, of, of gate, from point of view of a, of a, a technical um, of the technical side of the project, uh, this really is an optimization problem, and this is uh, this falls somewhere between generative design and uh, optimization as research. Um, and depending on how you look at it, we, we need to have um, we need to look at materialistics in order to optimize optimize the whole thing. Um, so we started with um, dividing dividing the systems in uh, 
um, uh, dividing the problem into different mathematical models. And we established that essentially what we had was the, that the land and the transport were the most important uh, models. Um, everything else was sort of, um, every other, because we divided them into, depending on the indicators that we were given. And we kind of said, okay, so we had an indicator for noise pollution and we said, okay, uh, this is this is a noise this is a noise model. We need some, we need noise parameter for this, um, and we 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 had the air pollution model, and we needed to create an air pollution model for this, um, and um, and and we were given other stuff like um, uh, where to position solid waste and uh, you know solid waste management containers, uh, lighting on the streets, which were all valid problems. They were just sort of peripheral to what we wanted to do. And we identified that the biggest thing was to um, to look at the land use problem and the transport problem, um, and to also establish that there is a very strong relationship between those two. You can't really solve a land use problem without including in, tra in transport infrastructure. Um, so we we started with uh, the land and the transport, and this that's that's pretty much what we found. We we found that uh, all of the indicators require the land use to be the, the defined in order to in order to have the um, in order to solve for the indicators uh, to get that relationship between input and output. Uh, so the the geometry of the land was also always going to reflect uh, all the indicators. The transport model uh, maybe we didn't have to include. Uh, the transport for calculating the gross floor area. So we had a we had initially some geometric requirements. So for example, for every person that wanted to live within the city, we need to establish 40 square meters of gross floor area. So or for residential use, for example. So if you have 2,000 people, you multiply by 40, you get the gross floor area you need to provide. Uh, so th that's required a land use model to allocate uh, some buildings. Uh, and, but you also had to find whether there is enough coverage, so whether everyone lived uh, 400 meters away from um, from a kindergarten, um, which which required um, which required the transport model because we needed to place transport infrastructure in order to calculate distances. Um, and the other models, such as noise and air, they, they were related to transport and land use, but they were not required to calculate these these essential indicators. Um, so the way we approached it, so once we established this, we really needed to establish what we're inputting into a model and, and what we're outputting. And, and of course, what the constraints were. So we, we kind of went in two directions. The first direction was that we wanted to include, we said, okay, we had the, we had parcels that were parcels that we could place buildings in. So that those are individual parcels on the left hand side. Um, and you can place individual buildings within individual parcels. And you can essentially, each building has um, uh, four vertices. Uh, that's how it's defined. And each vertex has two coordinates. And so you basically have eight parameters for each building. And you also have the story, uh, the number of stories that the building is. Um, so you have nine parameters for each building, and if you input those not, and, and if you multiply this by the number of buildings, you're going to get how many parameters you need in your land use model. So this is just land use because, I mean, you can include transport, but we start with the land use model, the land use backbone, and then we include the transport after that. So in the uh, so we started off with this one. We we generated some designs. It was it was I think successful. Um, but then, but then we kind of decided that maybe it's unrealistic to include real buildings. Maybe there is, uh, maybe that's not how they're gonna uh, architects are going to solve it. Maybe it's going to be also quite slow because there was quite a lot of parameters. Um, and for a planning process, maybe we should go with a different approach. So we left that in the backlog, and we we looked at instead of doing this, we we take all of the parcels that are available within a region, and we divide them into a grid. And then we allocate to each cell in the grid, we allocate a purpose. So one cell is going to go for residential purposes, another for an office purpose, or uh, yeah, uh, whatever. Uh, so um, so that's so that's essentially so that those are essentially the two approaches, and we needed to test both of them. Um, but but the the 
both of them gave us a framework to add buildings, uh, include, uh, uh, include areas, uh, and calculate the raw store areas. Uh, and they could be uh, included in a transport model as well, and we could solve both of them, for both of them. But we, but we still needed to find uh, the relationship between indicators and uh, geometry. So we've kind of discussed with Sofia Plan on a couple of occasions uh, that you, you need some functional relationship because, yeah, you, we really needed that connection between in, input and outputs, and we needed to find it in literature or just kind of uh, domain knowledge or whatever. But that's not an easy task with everything. So uh, we need to uh, we need to specify the problem in a way that you can you can connect uh, inputs and outputs. Um, and these are just some examples of, of, of stuff that you can apply, uh, not necessarily um, uh, uh, reasonable. Uh, I mean, they're reasonable, but it's not necessarily something you would use, uh, but it's just sort of something you can take out of an empirical equation or a simulation derived from data or, you know, just just the, uh, just the basic model building strategy. Um, and the other thing we needed to have was to constrain the model because without constraints the model is, is, is huge there's a huge number of combinations or there is a huge number of variables and especially because we are looking at the multi-objective problem um, we really need to to have a way to guide the model so we are either going to include hard constraints that are going to completely um, uh, take out some uh, solutions from the problem based on uh, uh, knowledge of expert knowledge uh, or we are going to include soft constraints which are going to be like penalties that are permissible but still not desirable um, so that's the so that's the basic uh, idea we we define those two models and we define inputs we define outputs we define constraints and we try to put this into an, uh, uh, a solver um, so what we used um, as tools were essentially python python and, and rhino uh, Python, we did almost everything. So, I mean, I uh, I did the two models in Python. It's uh, I used NetworkX and GeoPandas. Pymo, Evgeny also uh, used for the Evgeny actually used the transport text for developing the transport models. Uh, so, so we and then and then we used and then I used the Grasshopper just to visualize three D visualization. But we also visualized it in in Python as well. So it's kind of the whole process was was mainly on Python. Um, so the, the first model is just essentially, I, I try to uh, make the, the buildings. Um, I try to just allocate buildings. And then the idea was that we can define the transport model by uh, shortest distances from a building to existing infrastructure. And we just, uh, you know, we just would put a straight line to, to, a park, to a building. So we wouldn't consider ourselves with transport. Once we have the building, we need to establish transport links. Um, so that's the so that was the general idea. You have nine parameters for each building, and then based on this, you calculate the gross floor area for each building, and you then penalize it with a soft constraint so that the building is so uh, the building has to be within the boundaries. It has to not have a specific area uh, related to the parcel, and it needs to it shouldn't have too uh, narrow of edges. So it should its edge should be building like we we just wanted to kind of have normal buildings. Um, so then you combine so you for example you make ten buildings like this. You combine their gross floor areas and then you divide by the population um, to get gross floor area for each person. And that's how you would satisfy the the gross floor area requirement that Sofia Plan had. Um, and to do this, and, and you had the model, that, that was basically the model. We would just look at we just looked at the gross floor area. Uh, and then we and then we just input this into PyMO. Initially, we just did this for residential buildings, uh, but then we wanted to see if we can also calculate based on not based on transport infrastructure, not based on Manhattan distances, but on uh, right, uh, radio distances, how much uh, how close we are to, to existing um, to existing um, um, facilities such as kindergartens or or bus stops, um, and to and to and to get an indicator for those things as well. So we used the genetic algorithms for one and uh, the NSGA for for the other one, non-dominated uh, genetic algorithms uh, for multi-objective optimization. Um, so the so the infrastructure was was this. It wasn't too much of a uh, it 
from a from an IT point of view, it wasn't uh, too complicated. Uh, we used mostly libraries uh, also to also to run it. Uh, but but we got but we got so some I, I would say fairly good results at the end. Uh, so we all we did the the inputs uh, the inputs the the operations it's all done in GeoPandas. Then you use Pymu to uh, to do the optimization, and then you use Grasshopper to visualize it. So uh, the the end product was was actually this, and it, it looks quite good. I mean, this one isn't converged. Uh, there is not enough at the moment. There is no enough uh, hardware. Uh, we don't have uh, enough of um, a computing power to to make this converge. But uh, from what we saw from the convergence uh, checks, uh, it, it was actually going okay. Um, so that's what we did. We showed it to Sophia Plan, and um, we kind of, um, and it was um, it was quite successful. But then we decided, okay, maybe we should try not to include individual buildings. Um, so we then went on to do the land transport grid model, uh, and this one is much i wouldn't say more complicated i would say though more i, I think there's more um substance with it so the the land and transport models again here are they're both modeled simultaneously um we take the input data which is in shape files um uh, in geometric coordinates and and we divide it into two problems the one problem is the grid problem, and the other is the uh, the land use problem. So the one problem is the transport, the other is the land use problem. We we model the land use with GeoPandas, uh, which is basically tabular databases. Uh, but then we model the um, we model the grid with um, with uh, network X, which is graph database, which is a graph uh, graph problem. Um, and essentially, what we what we get uh, at the end was was quite neat. Um, so we haven't gotten to this part because the transport model is currently under development. But Evgeny was making quite good progress with it. Um, but um, but essentially, what we what we had was we generate a land use model, uh, and then and then we for each land use uh, of configuration we generate transport links, and then we're using random walks we we calculate we we find a compatible network, a compatible transport network for the land use. And then uh, we generate this a bunch of times. We generate a number of random walks. Um, and the only uh, requirement for the random walk is that it, it goes through all of the buildings. Uh, once we do that, we get the parents uh, in the genetic algorithm. And then from the parents, we get, uh, we derive children, but the children, are only derived on the land use. And then once we get the children on the land use, uh, the land use children, we do the same procedure to find, uh, to do multiple random walks, to find multiple networks, and then we run the networks, and then we find the best network and the, the best combination between land use and network, and then for the children as well. And then we use the children and the parents to uh, combine them into a, the same data set. We run them together. The, then we we chop off half of them and we continue on. And that's that's the NSGA2. That's that's basically NSGA2. That's that's non-dominated genetic algorithms. Uh, however, um, uh, that's uh, that's just the oh and and you you basically um, you kill off you you take off the the individuals which are. Um, Essentially, um, oh, not on the Pareto front. So, so here is the the concept of the Pareto front because we have multiple objectives at this, at this point. We have uh, objectives. Uh, yeah, and that, that's pretty much it. Then we get to to new generation. We continue this on until we find uh, some convergence to the indicators we want. Um, so the land use model it's it's uh, it's essentially uh, done uh, in GeoPandas, and we create the grid. We we allocate so because in the previous one I specified that uh, we had nine parameters for each building. Here we don't have uh, any coordinates. We just divide the space into cells and we assign properties to cells. Each cell has a property of type, so it's uh, each cell can be either residential or commercial or educational. But, but you, you essentially assign a type to the cell. And you also assign stories to the cell because this, these cells essentially would form the buildings. 
And once you once you do that for the cells, you we did we used a um, um, we use uh, dbscan uh, this um, clustering uh, algorithm uh, to cluster in cell um, the same types of cells that are next to each other. Um, once we did that, we we generated the transport infrastructure from the clustered cells, and and that and that became a separate separate problem. Um, but but yeah, but once you generate the stories, uh, we uh, we constrain them a little bit. That there's more operations, but that's that's the gist of it. We get to cluster buildings. We we cluster the buildings, and and we um, and essentially the, the, those are our buildings. Uh, and then we kind of proceed on with the transport. Um, and there, Evgeny basically uh, takes the transport uh, model. Uh, he generated the transport model, and he uses multiple. He uses random walks to get to allowable solutions. So we had from Sophie Plan the requirement to uh, for each building to have at least one. Uh, connection with the main infrastructure with the main road infrastructure for each building that was that was required so the objective here is to minimize the uh, amount of uh, road that we need to include in the model um, as to satisfy this this requirement and and by by generating maybe a thousand random walks and with the random walks we each random walk we we make sure that it converges, that it that it covers all building, that it covers all buildings. Then we choose the best one. We plug it in back to the back to the model, and we continue on with the uh, genetic algorithm. Um, so that's 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 about it. Because the transport model is still not is still in the making, and we are actually going to concentrate on the transport model now. After I mean, yeah. Uh, after now, uh, but the Lantius model is ready, so I'm going to show you the uh, infrastructure and the results for it. Um, so essentially, the uh, the problem is, um, I mean, we just we included this into the uh, Paimu uh, library. Uh, so because the library already has this structure, we we didn't change anything. We just obeyed the structure, and the only thing we developed was the problem. So we needed to to put the problem in and the algorithm to select an algorithm and to get the results, visualize them, uh, include some matrix matrix, uh, see the convergence, um, and and that's about it. So the whole thing is quite hairy, I think. But um, but if you look at the um, if you look at the algorithm, um, I mean it essentially it essentially starts with a grid, assigns variables, clusters them, filters some uh, filters some that. It has some operations that really are not important. Um, then, then it combines the the gross four areas. It calculates the uh, aggregate gross four areas. It calculates these uh, indicators. Uh, essentially, those are gross four areas for each type of building. Uh, and then, and then it and then it uses them within the NSGA two, which is which has this kind of structure: ranking, uh, tournament selection, crossover, mutation, and then. It goes on and on until we converge. So, so that's what we. So the algorithm actually is. Uh, we needed. We had some work on the initiation, the crossover, and the tournament, and the mutation. We did some work to try to kind of. To kind of um, um, so, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah. So. We had the crossover, the mutation, and in the initiation kind of changed in the energy to um, algorithm, uh, but that's but that's essentially it. That's all the, the we we kind of try to incorporate uh, expert knowledge within the initiation stage. We try to incorporate it within the cross the um, we try to kind of change the crossover a little bit and the mutation. Well, actually, again, it's, again, is doing that at the moment. We try to include it in the um, in the presentation, but um, we couldn't finish on time. Um, but we kind of change the crossover in the mutation so that it uh, changes the way it um, it crossover some some buildings so that they stay uh, collected together. Um, but but that's but we didn't do much in in the algorithmic regard. We just used stuff. So the metric in order to know if if we're doing well, we we had to look at the metric and uh, we looked at the running metric. 
So a runic metric is like uh, when you have a Pareto front, the runic metric tells you basically um, how fast you're converging. It just does it with extra steps because you, you have a front, you don't have a single solution that's converging, but it looks at the ends of the front and uh, the distribution within the front. And uh, I think it's quite a good convergence matrix because we have only 50, uh, 50 uh, runs because the, the, the actual algorithm is really, um, is, is kind of slow. Um, we haven't converged, but I mean, we are getting there. So it's a good sign that we haven't converged because, you know, if, um, you shouldn't expect to converge with 50 steps. And um, and I think uh, it's it's good that it's still going in convergence, and we can try it on a on a stronger machine. And I think it's gonna it's gonna work. Um, so as outputs, that's that's it. That's the whole thing. And uh, the outputs really are this: we try to make good matrix, uh, you know, a good visualization. We try to present it as product. We try to make it as uh, appealing as uh, as appealing as possible to to Sophia Plan to kind of make them like it. Um, and recognize the work, and uh, that's that's how it looks. It has a, uh, it kind of shows you. Uh, so because the uh, because the NSGA two, it, it pops out a population of like fifty or how met, no matter how many, but a then number of individuals, and each individual in our case is a master plan, and the the whole concept is that the architects have to scroll scroll down and find the best solution, uh, what, whatever they like based on their judgment. So they needed some matrix to matrices to uh, see which one they like. And that's that's the parallel axis and the um, and this uh, spider web um, graph is that, that that's what they were doing. And they could also see um, if it's on the if the solution is on the Pareto front or if it isn't. I mean, we could have also included only the Pareto front. Um, but I mean, uh, we, we could we could do that, and we will do that. It's just um, this way it looks. It looked a little bit better to me. That's why I did it like that. Um, and the animation, I think, uh, is I also animated some uh, kind of the how the grasshopper changes through scenarios. So that those are different scenarios. Uh, it applies the algorithm applies constraints automatically. It, it goes through the buildings, looks at them, kind of. Uh, it's quite cool. It's quite neat. That's the that's cool part of the presentation. I think. Um, so that's that's pretty much it from the um, from the uh, current work that we did. So that's so that's how we got to here. So the future work. Well, the transport network is a huge thing, I think, because because you you actually um, even if you if we decide to go with the with one of those two scenarios, and and we we'll probably work on both. But if we uh, decide to go with uh, the grid solution, we have a transport network. We can connect it with the with the existing transport network, and we can start calculating distances to to uh, to places. And this way, in this way, we can we can start uh, putting buildings. Uh, I mean, we can we can find the indicators, um, and we can allocate, for example. Um, I don't know, kindergartens and schools and um, yeah, I think kindergartens and schools and office buildings based on the best location, based on some distant matrices. matrices. So our research at the moment is to kind of see which optimization problems we can solve using this approach and uh, in general using um, using a gridded solution. But I think it's quite a lot. I think it's a really important area. Um, and I think that's it. Uh, thank you. Thank you all for listening. <laughs>